sorry, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today is September 30th. Uh, actually, we complete the first half of the financial year today. Yes, wishing everyone a successful next half and hope the next few months help boost the economy as well as the woodworking and uh, product manufacturing sector. Um, I would now like to say, state that this webinar, even though it is not, the timings have not been mentioned, it will be of a duration one hour and in excess of five to 10 minutes. Um, I would like to hand over to Pranesh to say a few words before we begin with the main presentation. Over to you, Pranesh. Thank you, Nirmala. Uh... Pranesh, you're on mute, please. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Nirmala. I guess it's still morning, Nirmala. Uh, so I, I looked at my watch again and I thought, uh, are we into the afternoon already? <laughs> so, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again uh, to the Canadian Wood webinar, best practices in manufacturing of doors, door jams and windows this time. This is the fifth in a series of uh, webinars being organized by us to share information on sustainability, forestry, details on the wood species, lumber, and most important, above all, best practices in manufacturing on doors, door jams, and windows. Uh, I encourage you to keep trying, typing in your questions while the presentation is on. It helps us to collate a bunch of similar questions together and thus answer a larger number of people at the same time. My colleagues Peter and Rajay will try and answer as many questions as possible during the Q&A session just after the presentation. However, these remain unanswered. If any remain unanswered due to the constraints of time, we will certainly answer on one-on-one -on -one basis by email after the webinar. Uh, those who have joined in for the first time, uh, Karenian Wood, formerly known as FII, is a not-for-profit organization it's a crown agency of government of British Columbia, the westernmost province of Canada. We are supported by the federal government. Our mandate is to promote Canadian wood species in the offshore markets by spreading education, creating awareness, apart from handholding and technical support, and of course, sharing of the best practices. My colleague and our technical advisor, Peter Bradfield, will cover this much more in detail and his presentation today. So without any further delay, I invite Peter to begin the webinar, which I hope you will find very informative and interesting. Over to you, Peter. Thanks, Pranesh. Let me just share the screen now. So hi, welcome to uh, this webinar, everyone, and a special welcome to those of you who are, who are joining a Canadian Wood presentation for the first time. <clears throat> Today, we're going to discuss best practices in manufacturing with wood and why Canadian wood. Canadian wood, uh, just uh, recapping what Pranesh uh, mentioned, is um, a crown agency of the government of British Columbia, uh, which is the westernmost province of Canada. Um, we have a mandate to promote Canadian forest products in the export markets. And so we're a not-for-profit organisation. We're fully funded by the BC and Canadian governments. And so we don't engage in any commercial activity. I'd like to commence this session with a five minute video shot in British Columbia, which gives you an overview of the Canadian lumber industry and will lead us into best practices to be employed when working with Canadian species in manufacturing. So please bear with me and I'll get this rolling. There are few places on earth that can match the diversity and richness of Canada's forests. Forests are an important part of Canada's natural ecosystem and central to its economy, making up just under half of its landscape with eight major forest regions and a vast diversity of wood species. From planting a seedling to manufacturing lumber, the forest sector in British Columbia and Canada is an interconnected industry of forest management and wood processing. This includes planting, tree harvesting with modern, high-tech machinery, and sophisticated wood product manufacturing. The entire cycle is planned around responsible resource management. In British Columbia, forestry and wood product manufacturing are a fabric of our culture, our communities, and our people. 
our forests provide a sustainable supply of wood for lumber and mass timber products, while protecting our environmental and social values of wildlife, water, community, economic interests, and First Nations peoples. British Columbia is a global leader in sustainable forest management. Forestry practices in British Columbia ensure that environmental, social, and economic needs are met for current and future generations. This matters to our customers and sets us apart from other supply regions globally. Wood products from British Columbia come from legal, sustainably managed forests. By law, less than 1% of the forests are harvested annually, with three trees planted for every single tree harvested. This commitment to forest regeneration results in 200 million new seedlings planted every year, ensuring replenished forests for the future. Canadian wood suppliers provide certified products under the Forest Stewardship Council FSC, and the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification PEFC. These strict international certification standards add additional assurance of the global protection of forest resources and make Canada a reliable and sustainable provider of wood products. State-of-the-art technology and machinery incorporated in our forestry practices and through our highly productive, efficient sawmills support the production of Canada's quality lumber. After harvesting, logs are transported to sawmills for manufacturing. At the sawmill, the logs are cut to target lengths and loaded into a debarking machine to remove the bark. Next, logs are processed through primary breakdown equipment like head rigs and chip and saws and are turned into lumber. The lumber is then sawed to specific widths and trimmed to specific lengths as it passes through secondary equipment like edgers and trimmers. A scanner will show if the lumber requires any further trimming. Next, the lumber is sorted by thickness, width, length, and sometimes by grade attribute. It is stacked, which may include stacking on sticks for kiln drying. When the lumber is dry, it is ready for final processing. Some lumber goes through a planer mill to be made smooth. Whether planed or rough, the lumber is then graded and trimmed. It is sorted by size and by grade, then finally packaged for shipment. This results in the most efficient yield of the best quality lumber. Once the lumber is packaged and prepared for shipment, it is loaded onto a network of trucks and rail cars for delivery to shipping ports for distribution around the world. Independent studies confirm that the CO2 stored in wood products far outweighs any extra CO2 generated by the efficient manufacturing and shipping of Canadian lumber around the world. Lumber produced from British Columbia and Canada is durable, strong, and versatile. Superior working properties offer design flexibility and durability. Canadian lumber products can be bent, shaped, or assembled as required, making it ideal for countless door, outdoor, and structural applications such as windows, doors, gazebos, and furniture like tables and chairs. Canadian wood species are also easy to face laminate, edge glue and or finger joint, and standard sizes and grades ensure that the same high quality product reaches the client each time. Canadian wood products bring warmth and natural beauty to an interior and exterior application or furniture product. It can be sanded to create a smooth surface, has a superior coating adherence, and can easily take any stain or finish. Across Canada and North America, wood products are influencing design and construction, not only for interior and exterior applications, but also the construction of buildings. Mass timber products are changing the way buildings are constructed, allowing for immense spans and taller buildings made of wood. Canadian wood products are being used in a wide range of buildings and products, showcasing the versatility, strength, and durability of lumber from Canadian forests. That is why using Canadian wood is a natural choice. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm always amazed by the, the statistic that we're planting 200 million seedlings every year in uh, British Columbia. Very impressive. Sorry. So I think the message in the video is that uh, Canada provides a reliable supply of sustainable, certified and versatile lumber. And in India, Canadian wood has partnered with many manufacturers uh, with a mutual interest in evaluating our Canadian species. Uh, evaluating for suitability, 
uh, workability, finishing and performance through product trials, uh, many of which have resulted in window and door programs, for example, using Canadian wood. So what are the Canadian species I'm referring to and what are the benefits of Canadian wood in particular? Here is a quick overview of our unique Canadian varieties. In Canadian wood we have five distinct species available and you're going to see many examples throughout this presentation as to how they are used. These are large trees firstly, um, 100 feet and taller in many cases, rarely harvested under 100 years of age. So Canada's forests are old growth natural forests. The logs are large in girth and the wood is fine grained, mature and stable. Unlike most pine species offered by other countries, four of our five Canadian species are available in clear grades, which are ideal for fine joinery. And two of our Canadian species are naturally durable. Most importantly, our Canadian species are versatile. Take Western hemlock, for instance. This species turns, planes and shapes well and can be sanded to a smooth finish. Fine grained and available in clear grades, Western hemlock is recommended for internal furniture and mouldings, yet it also can also be used in structural applications, doors and windows. Spruce pine fir. This is comprising three or four species which are harvested and processed together a mix of 100 year old fine grain wood from the interior forest of British Columbia. Graded and stamped to meet North American structural codes, SPF is medium density with high strength, which means not only is it used for house framing and prefab TNG structures in India, but also for doors, windows, furniture and fit outs. Douglas fir. This is one of the best known species globally for building and construction. The species has been used for more than 150 years in export markets worldwide. So while Douglas fir is best known for its structural properties, note the clear joinery grade used to create the panel door seen on this slide. Yellow cedar, fine grained, easy to work and easy on tools. Yellow cedar grows so slowly it requires more than 200 years to reach a marketable size. It's durable and ideal for outdoor applications where termites and decay are an issue. It has an enormous following in India for door jams, doors and windows. And last but not least, Western red cedar. Durable and extremely dimensionally stable, termite and decay resistant and available in clear grades the applications for this species are endless. <clears throat> and important to note, all Canadian wood arriving in India is sawn finished lumber with excellent working properties, which brings us to our focus today. What do we mean by manufacturing and what do we mean by best practices? Well, before we get into best practices, let me show you some manufactured products, such as this raised panel door, louver shutters, shower door, and decorative panels made from thinly sliced yellow cedar lumber embedded in glass. All of these products, most importantly, made in India. In fact, I'm pleased to say all of the products featured in this webinar today, without exception, are made in India using Canadian wood. And we do have wonderful examples of door jams and doors, furniture, windows, panelling, artefacts, cabinetry and joinery, outdoor products and many more. Uh, however, in today's presentation, we are focused on doors and windows, such as these beautifully crafted examples of frames and shutters in Douglas fir, made by Delhi-based Buildcraft and installed in this house in Himachal. Located at an altitude of 7,000 feet, the house known as Kapua Villa is designed by Delhi-based Akar design consultants and constructed by Buildcraft using Douglas fir throughout, including framed glass doors, window and door frames and shutters. Lovely work. 
So in keeping with the theme, we have lots of examples to show from the door and window industry in India. Uh, right now, continuing with Douglas fir, these are, are frames and shutters featuring different finishes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oversized threshold frames in Douglas fir at the recently opened Taj Rishikesh. And the same in the close up. Framed glass doors at Sitaran Ayurvedic Retreat on the beach in Kerala, featuring Douglas fir. Prefab house, including windows and doors in Douglas fir by Chennai based Class A. And Douglas fir swivel doors and door frames at Sept University Workshop in Ahmedabad. This Douglas fir flush door frame and door jam combination from Doors and Door Systems, Mumbai, recently underwent fire rating certification testing at a Noida lab. The shutter at 45 millimeter thickness and the frame at 70 by 120 mil are manufactured from Douglas fir shop grade, allowing two finger joints per frame section and incorporating two intermescent strips in the door jam rebate. As a result, Douglas fir successfully achieved 60 minute fire rating under the India standard BS 476 part 20 to 22. We're very pleased about that. Moving on to yellow cedar, which is now widely specified for windows in India. This design was manufactured by Tectonics Mysore and painted matte white for installation in a prestige group development containing 5,000 windows. Another variation from tectonics and yellow cedar. And these ultra high end yellow cedar windows are manufactured in Delhi by Arteus. Arteus's office and showroom in Gogaon features fixed yellow cedar windows, entrance door, sliding window wall designs, Combinations of fixed windows, sliding door and panel door. Panel door designs, door jams and casement window, all in yellow cedar. Artia specializes in engineered components for all their window and door products. Using only the highest grade of yellow cedar available and carefully selecting for moisture content and grain, the wood is finger jointed and or laminated for extra strength and stability. Another strong proponent of engineered components is Chennai based Sundaria. A prolific user of yellow cedar, this manufacturer has installed more than 20,000 door jams in a single project for the likes of Puravankara in Bangalore and large projects such as Grand Hyatt in Delhi. Sundaria also make doors and insists on door strips in yellow cedar for their flush doors due to the widespread wet mopping practices in India. Yellow cedar is highly recommended in wet environments and humid climates due to the wood's exceptional natural durability. These are solid yellow cedar jams from Sundaria. And these engineered jams, finger jointed and edge glued, produced by Pyramid Mysore, are installed at Mysore's Hotel Mercure. Speaking of Pyramid, uh, this modular wood frame construction house made by Pyramid and Mars Furniture, sister companies under the VAR group, was featured at India Wood this year, with yellow cedar windows and doors, which were trimmed inside with Western Hemlock. The house was quite a hit. Another of our group creation is this wood frame construction display home in Mysore, featuring Canadian species throughout, including skylight windows in yellow cedar. The exterior view shows fixed casement and awning windows. 
and yellow cedar casement windows and entry doors from inside. Yellow cedar window at Mars Furniture in Mysore and window wall sliding doors by Total Environment, Bangalore. Total, Total Environment Hospitality, also known as TE, is a full solutions provider from design to execution. Employing engineered components for their window and door joinery, Yellow Cedar is finger jointed and or laminated for extra strength and stability in their factory. And featured in TE's sliding window frames, fixed door frames, and Yellow Cedar sliding door window combinations. All seen here installed in their high-rise multi-level apartments and villas in their flagship project, Windmills of Your Mind in Bangalore. Beautiful project. So you will have noticed in this series of slides that several quality manufacturers have adopted finger jointed and laminated components. And I would like to point out for those of you who do not have a finger joint line but wish to look at engineered products, there are alternatives. Uh, one of which I saw last year at a very high end window manufacturer in BC. Uh, the company specializing in, in bespoke yellow cedar and Canadian hardwoods employed scarf joints rather than finger joint. Now scarf joints can be very effective for longer blocks and larger sections of solid or laminated wood. So I think that might be something to consider if you don't, um, if you're not currently finger jointing. Moving on, magnificent engineered yellow cedar panel doors made by Artius in Gurgaon and solid wood entrance door with side lights from E-Door in Hyderabad. Yellow cedar door and window frames at Wood Nido's Chennai house. Fixed window and entry door at a farmhouse near Pune by DS Global. And yellow cedar patio doors at the same house. Yellow cedar window and door frames at the Nine Wooden Homes Wood Frame Construction House in Bangalore. Yellow cedar carved door by Steepex in Calicut. And yellow cedar simply painted white. Again, yellow cedar carved door and simply painted white. The white door was manufactured by Engineers Ply in Delhi. More examples of yellow cedar windows and doors by Artius. Yellow cedar door jam profiles by Dormac in Jaipur. As you can see, yellow cedar takes stain beautifully. Awning and casement windows in yellow cedar by Farwood in Chennai. And door frames and architrave by Kalachandra, Bangalore. Before I move on to Western Hemlock examples, I would just like to say that what we see in this slide is not best practice in my opinion. I think door jams should not be used as the formwork for finishing wall openings because, you know, adding moisture in the form of plaster and free water and creating humidity uh, around uncoated wood, especially on the floor where end grain is exposed, is inviting water absorption, swelling and perhaps subsequent cracking. Door jams should ideally be factory coated on all six surfaces and installed only after completion of all construction work, including plastering, painting, tiling, and laying of floating floors and carpets. This, in my view, would constitute best practice. Now, moving on to Western Hemlock, we see here fixed and casement windows in Pune, Western Hemlock at SEPT University. And again, Western Hemlock at the SEPT workshop, Ahmedabad. 
carved Western Hemlock door by Steepex in Calicut, and wardrobe shutters by Mars Furniture, Mysore. Beautiful Western Hemlock wardrobe and desk shutters. Interior view of awning windows with Western Hemlock trim, Pyramids Mysore house. Western Hemlock entry door by Tech Workshop and panel door from Kalachandra. Sometimes in India, door jam manufacturers require non-standard thicknesses and wider widths, which are not always available in solid KD wood. These finger jointed edge glued panels in Western Hemlock will help to solve that problem by providing various thicknesses, including 45 millimeter and 58 millimeter, which can be cut to any width as required. This is a new initiative from Canadian Wood whereby we have imported these panels for trial purposes, meeting with great success by the way, and we wish to encourage local manufacturers to make in India. The panels can be produced in clear or tight knot grades and provide all the advantages of KD precision engineered construction with finished sanding, along with maximum size flexibility. In product trials, we have seen the ease of use in recovering door jams from the accurately sized and sanded panels, which are simply ripped to width and profiled quickly and efficiently with minimal waste, if any, other than the sawdust. We see, that is Canadian Wood Seas, Western Hemlock engineered door jams uh, having a bright future in India. Now, a quick look at SPF windows and doors, such as this example in Goa. Beautiful SPF windows and doors in this billiard room on the terrace at Madras Rowing Club by Class A. And in Kodai Canal, spruce pine fir prefab TNG from the Class A factory in Dindigul with SPF windows and doors, windows and doors, sorry, installed during the wall assembly. Western Red Cedar, this is an entry door by Total Environment Bangalore and Plantation Shutters by Artius. A beautiful example of traditional carved door in Western Red Cedar and Western Red Cedar panel door by Delhi based White Oak Doors and Interior. So let's end the display of Made in India with this wonderful project Raz Kangra in Himachal, which was proposed as a seven star luxury hotel using Western Red Cedar for soffit windows and doors and remains a work in progress. Of course, none of this quality manufacturing happens without skilled workers and a love of working with wood. Yet I do feel many manufacturers need to know a bit more or at least refresh when it comes to the points listed here. Those points being understanding wood properties and grade selection, understanding seasoning and acclimatization to equilibrium moisture content, understanding storage and handling of lumber, and applying properties, grading and EMC to manufacturing. Among the first things to understand is that Canadian lumber is kiln dried and heat treated, or as we say, KDHT. KD lumber is wood that has gone through a carefully monitored drying process in a kiln, during which temperature and humidity are controlled in order to eliminate moisture from the wood. HT lumber is specifically heated to a much higher temperature in the same kiln, but not for the purpose of drying, rather to eliminate any insects or pathogens that may be present in the wood. This is a requirement under India's import regulations. Typically, Canadian coastal species intended for manufacturing are dried to 12 to 14% average moisture content in a gentle and exacting process, which may require two to three weeks in the kiln. So after grading, kiln drying, heat treating and packaging, 
significant value has been added to the SORN number. Note the export packaging includes tight stacking, strapping to attached dunnage to avoid forklift damage, cardboard base and corner protection prior to banding, and barcode labelling. This example is vertical grain Douglas fir doorstock. Quite valuable and much, so much care is taken in the packaging. KD wood is bagged for weather and moisture protection and then it travels in a container from the northern hemisphere to India via the equator. This is a lot to ask. Since all wood is hygroscopic, we can understand the moisture content of lumber will be affected by changes in temperature and humidity inside the container in transit. So how do we manage our investment? This is a very important question and critical to your business plan. So please take a minute to check the points on this slide. When you receive the wood, please do check moisture content with a good quality moisture meter, ensuring that the correct species density is entered. Uh, select planks from the middle layers of the pack. And I would say check moisture content in 10% of the boards, perhaps in each pack. Be sure to measure moisture content in the middle of the length and the width and set aside any boards that are measuring more than 14% moisture content for acclimatizing. In fact, after segregating higher moisture content pieces, my best practice advice would be to place all the wood on stickers, irrespective of moisture content. I know that sounds a bit uh, unusual. And why place KD wood on stickers, you might ask? Well, the reason is explained here. You see, seasoned wood will continue to absorb or lose moisture depending on the surrounding temperature and humidity. After seasoning and upon exposure at a given location, wood attains the equilibrium moisture content at that location. So in other words, wood with a moisture content above EMC uh, will lose moisture and conversely, wood with a moisture content um, below EMC will absorb moisture, uh, allowing uh, seasoned wood to acclimatize uh, to its surroundings, wherever that is, will keep moisture movement and defects to a, a minimum. When wood arrives in India, it's distributed to all corners of the country, and each geography has its own microclimate, as we know. There's a direct relationship between relative humidity in that location and EMC. And as we see on this chart, wood located in Delhi, for instance, falls under zone two, yellow, where EMC averages eight to nine percent. So if wood is 12 to 14 percent uh, moisture content when it arrives in Delhi, it will lose moisture to the atmosphere to match the Delhi EMC. And only when acclimatized to Delhi's eight to nine percent will it be ready for remanufacturing. If KD lumber arrives in Mumbai with 12 to 14 percent moisture content, it will match Mumbai's zone three EMC, which is also 12 to 14 percent. However, if that wood is moved inland to Pune, for instance, it will need to acclimatize to Pune's zone two, eight to nine percent equilibrium moisture content. So we must pay attention to local EMC. Most of the defects and problems encountered in wood storage and manufacturing result from moisture content and inadequate preparation at the factory. Potential defects such as checking, splitting, and wood movement can be reduced or eliminated by acclimatizing on stickers. This is why I say it's a good idea to place all the wood on stickers. And when placing lumber on stickers, we have a great opportunity to inspect the lumber. Remember, it is the buyer's responsibility to understand the grade purchased and the defects allowed under that grade. So if you notice any problems while stickering, now is the time to advise your supplier without delay. Note the careful arrangement when placing boards on stickers. Ensure the stickers are vertically aligned and spaced evenly every 18 to 24 inches along the length of the pack, as we see here. Stickers should commence within one inch of the end of the pack. 
and the pack should be elevated on dunnage at least four to six inches above the ground. Placing extra weight on top of the pack will help to keep everything flat. Other tips include spacing the boards one inch apart horizontally uh, to allow more even airflow, uh, using a vapour barrier on the ground, which will stop any uh, movement of water, hygroscopic movement of water from the ground into the base of the pack. And if you intend splitting or ripping boards to smaller dimension, for example, two by six resawn to one by six blanks, it's always better to air dry the blank size. So rip first and sticker afterwards. Our next concern must be handling and storing of the lumber. You've made an investment in this value added wood, so it's important to train your workers to handle it with care and not as a commodity. After all, a lot of effort has gone into the sawmilling, grading, sorting, drying, export packaging, moisture checking, and perhaps even stickering. So packages should be protected from direct sun and exposure to moisture and dust, preferably in a well-ventilated warehouse or at least under an awning roof, as we see here. Stacking in an organised way should be relatively simple since we will have arranged our wood on stickers by species, size and grade. As mentioned earlier, it's imperative we understand the grade of the wood purchased. Typically for door and door jam and window manufacturing, we use a clear grade or a shop grade or a combination. And these grades should be segregated. Clear grade will be almost 100% usable. We must understand the difference in labor inputs and recovery for each grade. Shop grade, on the other hand, is a remanufacturing or recovery grade, which requires removal of defects by chopping and or ripping to recover clear pieces. And there is an optimum recovery for each individual board. So in this example, on first glance, the second option looks best since we can recover more usable parts. However, it's important to consider the lengths recovered. Sometimes longer clear cuttings are required in which case option one is better. But if you're making small windows or shutters or your product will be finger jointed, for instance, then option two might be best. Once the dry wood is transferred to the factory, best practice informs that it should be stacked on dunnage, pallets or racks in an organized way, according to species, size and grade and clearly labeled. Now our wood has been resawn and acclimatized, it's ready for our manufacturing process. But there is one more important step, and that is grain selection. Output from Canadian mills is predominantly flat sawn, although lumber packages will often contain a mix of flat grain and vertical grain, otherwise known as quarter sawn. In India, uh, flat sawn lumber is popular because of its floral grain pattern. However, there can be a downside to flat grain lumber. Therefore, precautions in manufacturing and assembly must be observed. In order to make good choices, we should have some understanding of wood movement. Tangential wood movement is along the growth rings and is the direction of greatest movement. Radial wood movement means perpendicular to the growth rings. And movement in this direction is smaller than in the tangential direction by a factor of two to five, or 40% less. Longitudinal wood movement, which is along the length, is negligible and usually ignored. In simple terms, lumber shrinks and expands mostly across its width and measurably in thickness, but much less. What's important to understand is that flat grain boards will shrink twice as much in width or more compared to vertical grain boards and flat grain boards will also have more tendency to cut. In this slide, we see examples of vertical grain, which can also be very beautiful and will achieve a high end look. Vertical grain can be specified in shop grades and clear grades, and vertical grain will be the most stable, providing superior performance in edge glued door panels, for instance. For some applications, best practice means astute 
grain selection. So be careful with board selection and choose wisely. In any event, make allowance for wood movement. For instance, in tongue and groove boards, the groove must always be deeper than the tongue. One eighth of an inch, even one sixteenth perhaps, is sufficient to provide a gap to accommodate shrinkage and swelling. The reality is when joining lumber by edge gluing, we are in effect making a single wide piece which behaves accordingly. So in the panel, in a, in a panel form, the panel now behaves like one very wide board. And there lies the challenge. The challenge is mainly to do with a board selection, grain selection and grain orientation. This slide tells us that a flat sawn one inch panel may shrink four times more in width than a two inch vertical grain panel. Of course, depending on the species. Naturally, the glue line, clamping pressure and duration, workshop environment and technique is important when gluing, but a good understanding of the wood's behavior is essential. Here we see that clamping should be done on both sides of the panel with uniform pressure to avoid cupping. Immediately after clamping a glued panel, its surface level must be checked with a, a metal ruler in this case, and if necessary, adjusted using a wedge and correct grain orientation of planks should have been taken care of during clamping. Grain orientation means arranging boards in such a way that shrinkage or swelling in one board is counteracted or balanced by opposite movement in an adjacent board. If flat grain wood is used, reversing the direction of the grain in adjacent boards helps to prevent the panel from warping. Although it may cause a door panel to have a wavy appearance maybe, but on this slide, we see flat grain boards arranged with alternate grain direction. That is uh, heart side up, heart side down, heart side up, etc. And vertical grain boards arranged heart wood to heart wood, sap wood to sap wood. In the case of a door panel, as I mentioned earlier, vertical grain material is the best choice and hence best practice. Not so common in door frame manufacture, but sometimes required for oversized door jams, face lamination. In this slide, which grain orientation is the better choice? That's a question. In my opinion, best practice is sap to sap or heart to heart. So in the top row, B is the best option, followed by C. And in the bottom row, E is correct. That is sap to sap and heart to heart. I think we can see that in manufacturing, the moisture content of wood at the time of processing is crucial and must be known. And wood behavior must be known and understood. So best practice is essential, which means close attention to moisture content, moisture differential, board selection, grain orientation, and product assembly. Wood is forgiving, but we must allow for movement over the life of the product. We do that by allowing joints to expand and contract. For example, if we were to employ breadboard ends on cabinet shutters, we must use elongated slots and oversized mortises in our rail, thereby allowing our panel to move in the direction of the arrows. This is simply good engineering demonstrating a knowledge of wood movement. Who hasn't seen this before? Door panels shrink and a white line shows up along the edge of the panel. Well, not to worry, this is perfectly normal, believe it or not, it means your frame and panel door is functioning as per the design and compensating for the seasonal movement of wood. This problem can be fixed by wiping some stain on the white line using a small paintbrush. And then after drying, we can add the gloss by applying lacquer. That's you know, doing a repair job. But better still, there are steps we can take to reduce or eliminate the white line problem, such as using vertical grain for the styles and whales where possible, and pre-coating all panels before assembly. I think that's the main point that I'd like to make, pre-coat where possible. 
As per design, panel doors are made of wood frame and a separate centre panel or multiple panels. The panels are not glued in place, so the tongue and groove arrangement allows them to float within the frame, expanding and contracting with humidity changes. If a door panel is inadvertently glued or held in place by pins, or if a door is recoated, for instance, so that the paint or the coating causes the panels to stick to the frame, we can see the result. The panel is unable to float freely, unable to move inside the groove in the frame, and therefore splits under tension. If a door is made in a moist climate, such as Mumbai in monsoon, and then shipped to a drier place, it will most likely shrink. And it could be up to a quarter of, a quarter of an inch in some cases. And then once in the destination home, it's going to shrink and swell with humidity levels. So care must be taken in design and construction. Another common door mistake occurs when a horizontal member is attached across a glued vertical panel, as in some shutters, for example. The result is tangential shrinkage, working against longitudinal shrinkage. Remember, the wide vertical panel will shrink or swell far more in width than the horizontal battens will shrink in length. In a tabletop or desk, we can design in panel movement by using elongated slots or appropriate hardware. However, in a door shutter where the back will be visible, we must find a different solution. In this example, we can see the batten has neat saw cuts disguised, disguised by V grooves, allowing adjacent saw curves to absorb wood movement in the panel. Quite clever and a reminder that in most things, the devil is in the detail. However, when it comes to styles and rail, rails, we can combine tangential shrinkage and longitudinal shrinkage to our advantage. In general, the frame joints seen here on the left perform better than the often used mitre joints on the right. By combining the butt style, tenon and bridle joints with vertical grain styles and rails, we can reduce visible shrinkage and swelling to a minimum. And of course, during a product's lifetime, moisture is the most important factor impacting upon the performance of the finish. So again, best practice is essential for the prevention of excessive moisture buildup in wood, whatever our product. Therefore, after final sanding in the factory, be sure to apply your chosen wood coating without delay in a controlled environment. Follow the manufacturer's directions and do not skimp on the sequence of steps drying time or number of coats. Coating of all surfaces, including unseen surfaces, with particular attention to end grains, serves as a barrier to moisture and will ensure a long service life for your product and reward you with happy customers. Now, I don't intend getting into detailed step-by-step -step machining and coating today because you are the manufacturing professionals, not me. However, However, in wrapping up, I would like to leave you with some key reminders when it comes to best practices when working with Canadian wood. When the wood arrives, please do remove the bags, check the moisture content, segregate the boards by moisture content, and allow the wood to acclimatise at the manufacturing location. Understand the grade being used and be selective when choosing individual boards. Check moisture content again and set aside any boards above EMC for further acclimatization. Check boards for defects which may need to be removed before machining and check the grain if you wish to select flat grain or vertical grain boards. Peter, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we're nearing. Uh, we just have two min one minute more exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If using flat grain to make panels, remember to check again. Remember to check grain orientation and ensure less than two percent moisture variation in adjacent boards. For best machining results, it's critical to use sharp blades and correct setup. Remember, optimum knife angles differ for hardwood versus softwood, and sometimes even between softwood species. Similarly, optimum feed speeds can differ between species 
and skilled in-feed operators will check boards, the grain direction and the best face for processing before feeding each board. Most of the time, quality control is more important than rapid feed. Store any panels or profiled boards which are work in progress away from floor and wall surfaces. Place weight on any stacks and tape or tie smaller bundles which are stored overnight. And products such as floorboards, finished doors and door jams should be stored at destination if possible at the same EMC as the room in which they are to be in which they are to be installed. Please remember best practice starts and ends with your recognition that joinery grade lumber is a valuable resource. Canadian wood is no exception so please treat it with care and respect your investment. I'd like to say a big thank you from me and the team at Canadian Wood for attending this webinar. I hope it's been informative and that you will consider using Canadian Wood for your window and door manufacturing. We are at your service. And now before I leave you, we will open up the session to questions. So let's see if we have some questions passed to our moderator, RJ. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for such a wonderful response to our webinar five. Um, uh, focusing on doors, door jams and windows uh, applications. We have lots of questions, Peter, uh, but we have just around 10 minutes now to answer uh, these questions. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll try and club some of the, you know, similar questions, pull them together and throw it at you, Peter. And uh, for the audience, uh, in case we don't answer your question, don't worry, we'll definitely get back to you. We have all your registered email IDs with us. So, you know, we will definitely get back to you in case some of these questions are unanswered uh, you know at the end of this webinar uh, so the first first question Peter uh, is about uh, the durability of this wood in hilly terrains you know I mean which species would you recommend and do you think that in hilly terrains uh, Canadian wood species can be easily used for these applications in, in, in the Indian climate are you saying uh, hilly areas in India, I'm sure you oh, know, you should be oh, hilly areas. Okay. some of the examples, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, can that be used? Our answer is obviously yes, but, he, and, but if you want yeah. to elaborate. Okay, that. so in hilly areas, yes, definitely. So, um, good question. Um, you will have noticed a lot of examples in yellow cedar, um, and yet uh, in the uh, in Hamachal, for instance, uh, we saw uh, Douglas fir being used. So, um, I guess um, yellow cedar is naturally durable, and it's used because of that reason, mainly across India, because of uh, durability against moisture, against uh, termites, um, against mold and all sorts of things. So it performs uh, equally to teak, for instance. Uh, now, if you're using Douglas fir or Western hemlock for windows, these can be used in hilly areas at some altitude where you don't have so many uh, termite issues, where the climates are usually cooler. So definitely, um, they're most suitable, uh, Douglas fir and Western hemlock in hilly areas, but all of our species can be used. Let me say that. Uh, we have two that are naturally durable, lead, need less maintenance and perhaps more stable, but the other species can also be used as long as we use uh, a good coating, a solution, and, and we design in, you know, some protection in terms of recesses and overhangs, that sort of thing. Good. So uh, the next question is uh, about uh, the insect and termite protection. You know, I mean, are these products termite resistant to use in interior applications? In fact, you know, uh, then there is another question, which is again on similar lines saying that, you know, you have been suggesting this for exterior applications. So are they water and termite proof? In India, wet wood can easily catch termite. Uh, so again, you know, an immediate reaction, uh, both the cedars, yellow cedar as well as western red cedar, they are naturally durable and they do have termite resistance properties. We all, all, all have the technical data sheets which are available with us uh, that can be downloaded from our website, canadianwood.in. And uh, whatever examples Peter has shown so far, these are implemented in India uh, across the country, different, you know, uh, right from Nasik to Pune to Delhi, Dehradun, you know, several places across even South, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, there are several places cover uh, you know dry um, weather like Rajasthan uh, there are examples in Jaipur Jodhpur so uh, so yes you know these are tried and tested but at the same time 
do we need treatment for interior applications? Yes. What kind of treatments? Probably Peter can elaborate uh, uh, more on that. But uh, um, uh, again, I, I would just want to add a rider that these are termite resistant, not necessarily termite proof. Yeah, uh, um, none, none of our species are termite proof. In fact, no wood is termite proof as such without some treatment. Um, the beauty of uh, Western red cedar and yellow cedar is they're uh, very, very uh, resistant. Um, naturally durable, so naturally resistant, not, not termite proof. And this applies to heartwood, really not, not sapwood in every species. So we, that's why the main reason we, we use uh, these species in exposed situations. But remember, um, when we are putting uh, timber windows in a, in a building, we, we must consider the termite issue and the, and the durability issues for the entire building. So there will be uh, termite ground treatments for termites, there'll be um, physical barriers to termites to stop them getting into the construction and therefore, you know, uh, getting into any windows or doors. Yeah. So any, any kind of treatment that you would want to suggest there, uh, you know? Uh... So, um, well, you know, if we're using Western hemlock or Douglas fir or spruce pine fir, we can use uh, a pressure treatment or even a, a spray on or brush on treatment, anti-termite treatment durability treatment, it sometimes changes the color of the wood, may not be as attractive. Uh, that again might be covered by the coating. So there are treatments. I wouldn't say the necessary indoors, uh, maybe more so on the external part of the house, but for extra insurance, definitely you can treat hemlock very well and um, with a pressure treatment. With a borate treatment, for instance, you know, as long as borate's not exposed to moisture, it's a very effective treatment. So that's a brush on treatment that we could apply to hemlock as long as you're coating the wood afterwards. Okay. Oh, next question is, uh, you know, from Vivek Deshpande from Spacewood. Now, he, he wants suggestions for the best wood species for door frames. And at the same, he also needs suggestions for styles and rails for door panels. So Vivek, uh, let me make it easy for you. You know, styles and rails is a different application for uh, making panel doors there, I would say. SPF or Douglas interior Douglas fir are commonly used, but um, you know you can also use hemlock for that. But for price consideration for that application, usually spruce pine fir or Douglas fir are the commonly used uh, species. Whereas for door jams as an application, what you are asking, yes, yellow cedar. Peter has shown lots of examples of that. Uh, Douglas fir and hemlock as well. And um, uh, you know these finger joint boards of western hemlock is a uh, recent development from our offerings and that's something which is uh, you know really being appreciated by a lot of door jam manufacturers it's hassle free easy to make so these are some of the options um, you know uh, which we would recommend and uh, yeah i think i think vivix uh, i think vivix had a look at their our finger joint edge glue panels already and um yeah we uh, we we see some promise there um it's still a work in progress but the beauty of those panels is that, uh, you know, if we make them to the correct thickness with it and, and you know, they come with a, f a f finished sanding, so basically all we need to do is, is uh, rip them to the required jam width and we have, you know, a, a very easy solution, cost-effective solution, really good productivity. So I think that's a good idea for the door jams, as RJ said, and uh, yeah, definitely hemlock for interiors. I, hope I think it can be a combination. It depends, of course, if you're, you're thinking about engineered um, um, components or, or solid components. If you're using solid components, then probably a clear grade is going to work better than a shop grade. But if you're able to uh, finger joint and engineer components, then a shop grade is quite cost effective also. And yeah, so Peter has made a very important point, Vivek. Um, it's not just the species, but the species and grade and size as a combination that will determine for your application what's recommended. And uh, I mean, we are always there to assist, you know, uh, feel free to ask those questions. We'll be happy to you know, come and meet you once this, uh, you know, Corona scare is off, but we can always <coughs> that and interact. But yes, you know, it, it's a combination that that's important. I think that's the message. Uh, uh, we have next question from Somitra Muzumdar from Millennium Engineering Contractors Limited. And she's asking Douglas fir made frames, uh, which underwent the fire rated certification, uh, as mentioned by you, Peter, in, in your presentation. Please let us know the density and specifications of Douglas fir wood. OK, so I mean, uh, yes, we do have, you know, as I said, all technical parameters can be downloaded from the resource library section. 
from canadianwood.in so i would strongly encourage all the participants to you uh, log on to our website and you know just use that resource library section lots of images there are lots of brochures available but to give a quick answer to you uh, somit um it's 540 is the density of uh, douglas fir but density alone doesn't determine the strength if you look at modulus of elasticity as a parameter it's 13400 plus you know so if you compare with let's say indian teak which we say gold standard really high up um, then yes you know 650 density versus 540 here but if you look at modulus of elasticity it's just slightly more than 10000 for teak wood whereas if you look at douglas fir it is 13000 plus uh another important point to be noted here is strength to weight ratio because these are softwood species and the length of the fiber is three times more than then uh, you know those of the hardwood species so it's the strength to weight ratio which plays a very very important role and there are many more you know other technical parameters which are available and um, uh, you know that's why douglas fir uh, wood species are suitable for this door and door jamb application one hour test yes but if it's designed well as a combination you can also achieve a two hour uh, you know fire resistant test you know so it, it's all about using in combination with a you know uh, astute design okay so <clears throat> okay so we have another question peter um, um, that's uh, again you know so canada has different weather conditions and we are bringing in uh, kiln dried wood from canada which is seasoned wood here uh, <clears throat> so you know what uh, care we need to take what are the necessary steps to make sure that these defects are minimized you know although it's uh, you know uh, done there in canada but by the time it travels here and by the time it's used here i'm sure you have covered some of these points in your presentation but do you want to elaborate yeah, yeah no as as i said i uh, you know what we see in india uh, they it's really important to be aware of the the moisture content in the different locations so you know kiln drying the wood uh, very much um, expedites the the final um, drying or acclimatization of the wood but because the wood's arriving in different destinations and and and, and then going to different destinations within the country all with a different emc we need to acclimatize the wood preferably on stickers um, so this is the main thing to do the main a precaution we need to take in india because of climate because of humidity because of temperature uh, all of these things are affecting the um, local emc at destination so as long as we be very careful uh, in and observing the moisture content of the wood we look after it and store it well and at the same time that's in terms of receiving and storing the wood and then at the time of manufacturing and processing the wood the same thing careful selection of boards checking moisture content it's just a routine uh, process that, that the manufacturers need to get into but so long as that's done um, then and and good designs incorporated it's important and we allow movement within the joints and so on um, then the wood's going to be used successfully and it is used successfully all over the world in all climates not just in british columbia canadian wood's been exported all over the world for 150 years actually so you know from australia to uk to europe to china um it's it's widely used for all applications successfully we have an interesting question peter what's the minimum life span of canadian wood both for interior and exterior applications so oh, hundreds of years it all it all comes down to maintenance um you know we have in north america of course and in australia there are houses standing uh, for 200 years wood wood framed houses with wood cladding um now maybe some of the boards have had to be replaced from time to time or certainly they might have they would have needed recoating um but as long as we maintain wood uh and it's not difficult it's it's all about the initial uh construction and design and proper coating and preferably pre factory you know factory pre coating uh as long as all that is done it's not a difficult job to maintain it just needs to be done every 2 or 3 years uh and it will last a lifetime Okay, for budget projects, can spruce pine for or SPF can can that be used for door jam manufacturing? You know, because yellow cedar may not be cost effective for some of the eco projects. Uh, yeah, that's the question. Uh, there are examples, especially in Punjab. You know, people use SPF for almost everything. So the answer is yes. But um, yeah, Peter, would you want to add there? No, no, I think you answered it, Ajay. It's uh, definitely yes. It's a. Uh, it's certainly. Um, yeah more more uh, uh cost effective than using yellow cedar um 
you're not going to get clear pieces. You know, it's, it's, the look you will get is a kind of a more rustic look with the, with the knots because you're working with a structural grade as opposed to um, yellow cedar uh, and red cedar and hemlock and Douglas fir, all those other species. They're joinery grades, you know, we're recovering clear wood. So we're making very kind of high line, um, high end looking product. But, you know, the SPF can look lovely. People, some people love knots in the wood. And as long as you're selective with the piece and you use a grade like J grade, you can definitely use uh, SPF for, for door jams and doors. So we have a question for these finger joint boards. What's the maximum thickness available? So we have at the moment three thicknesses, 45 mil, 58 and 70 millimeter. So 70 is the maximum, but uh, what response we have received so far is 45 and 58 are the most, uh, you know, acceptable thicknesses because it's engineered joinery. So, you know, uh, people are willing to consider around two inches, you know, as a broad parameter. Sorry, okay. gentlemen, you'll just have this one as a last question. Yeah. Yeah, so we just have time for one last question and uh, okay, so uh, Peter, you said door jam uh, should be placed almost in the end, you know, so someone wants to just clarify, um, you know, is that what you're recommending? It's, 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 it's kind of, it's what I'm saying is best practice and ideal, an ideal practice. It may not always be practical, I do appreciate that, but like uh, flooring, you know, solid wood flooring, uh, door jams and fine joinery, if you can deliver to the site and store that product in the room where it's going to be installed for some time, even a few days before the installation, allowing it to acclimatize to that very, you know, distinct and local EMC, that's going to, that's also going to help in terms of, you know, um, with any, uh, avoiding any issues. So just one last question before we end, you know, so, you know, someone is asking, uh, how does it, how does Canadian wood species compare, you know, uh, any species uh, with respect to teak, sal, etc. So, you know, my answer, I think I've already answered. Uh, we have this resource library available on CanadianWood.in. There is a complete comparison chart given with, you know, with respect to red maranti or teak wood or any of the commonly used species and commonly asked questions. We have already captured all the technical parameters, including application, screw holding capacity, and all the technical details that you would need. So I encourage you to use, um, you know, CanadianWood.in as a tab. Uh, just go through that website. A lot of information, including image libraries, available. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't take any more questions live, uh, but yes, uh, it's a promise that we will get back to you. I mean, we have noted all email IDs from where we have received questions. So we will answer, um, you know, we will send those answers back to you. Thank you so, so much again and um, over to you, Nirmala. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time out to attend this webinar hosted by Canadian Wood today. I know you all must be having a lot of questions that were unanswered today, but like Ajay said, we have captured all these from the Q&A panel. And in fact, these will be documented and replied back to you via email in a few days time. Uh, but if you still would like to know more, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us by visiting the Canadian Wood website. We have a lot of information uploaded there or by contacting any of our business development managers. We'll be most happy to assist you. Um, as stated by Pranesh in the beginning, this is webinar five in our series of educational webinars. Uh, we will continue uh, to hosting such webinars even in the near future. We look forward to seeing you again in our next webinar, a uh, date for which we will announce shortly. Just a quick uh, reminder, after the webinar, you will receive a survey link from Canadian Wood sent directly to your registered email ID. Uh, we request you to kindly fill the feedback form and share with us. Our feedback and suggestions are most welcome. With this, thank you once again, and we would like to end the webinar for today.